Hey guys, I'm Jason, and welcome to our very first video over here at Games In Depth. And what better topic to pick as our very first video than to talk about the Persona series, which is one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. For people that has never touched a Persona game, they may wonder, why is Persona so popular? So this video is for the newcomers, the people that have never played a Persona game, but might want to try to get into it. But at the same time, for you hardcore veterans of the series, once you watch this video, you'll definitely relate to many of the reasons why this game is so beloved. So with that being said, on to the video. If you're into JRPGs or know people that play JRPGs, you probably know about Persona. After all, its latest entry, Persona 5, was both critically acclaimed by both media and fans. But to newcomers of the series, they may ask, what is Persona? And that's a good question, because Persona is kind of hard to explain if you haven't played one before. In its simplest terms, Persona is half JRPG and half life dating simulator. While the first two Persona games did not have this life dating simulator aspect, starting from Persona 3, the life dating simulator aspect became a staple of the series. Taking the role of a high school student, you awaken to these special powers called Personas, which is your true self that's used to defeat evil. And aiding your quest is a mysterious old man named Igor, who's like your Jedi master in honing your special Persona powers. And unlike other popular JRPGs, such as the Final Fantasy series, or the Tales series, the Persona series takes place in real life Japan, but with some fantasy elements added in. One final thing, this video will concentrate on Personas 3 to 5. Now to tackle the question, why is the Persona series so popular? The first reason, the Persona series does a really good job of putting you in the shoes of a high school student in Japan. You really feel like you're there. The students that you see, the chatter that you hear, and the teachers that lecture every day during class really make you feel like a student. And while you may or may not like high school, we can all relate to it since we were all high school students at one point in our lives. Every day in school, the teacher teaches a lesson on a certain topic. These topics are actually interesting, and you actually learn a lot about Japanese academia. Every so often, you'll get quizzed on these topics on the fly in class, so you gotta pay attention. Then every quarter, you have to take exams. You can actually take tests in the game based off Japanese academia, so when an exam is around the corner, your friends and classmates actually remind you and loathe the day of the test. Some classmates may say, oh, do I really need to study for that test? Or, I really hate studying. While the hardworking students may say, you gotta study, and you should study because getting good grades is important. Stepping outside of your classroom, you can explore the rest of your school and see what a Japanese high school looks like. There are a lot of other classrooms to check out, the library to study in, the admin office, and of course, after school, extracurricular clubs. These clubs include the volleyball club, the music club, the drama club, and the sports club. It's details like this that make you relive your high school years, or mimic your current high school years if you're still a student. The second reason, social links and the game's relatability. The game will definitely connect with the player, especially if you're in your teens, 20s, or early 30s. In each Persona game, you get to know your party members and friends well. In Personas 1 and 2, this happens organically, where after you clear a dungeon or defeat a boss, the story progresses and your characters talk to one another and you get to know them better. The ideas of bonding with your teammates as well as with your other friends is definitely emphasized in the later Persona games, namely Personas 3 to 5. These are called social links in Personas 3 and 4, and confidants in Persona 5. But to avoid confusion between social links and confidants, we'll call all bonding activities as social links for the rest of this video. The social link concept encourages players to be friends with their teammates or date them, just like in real life. By bonding with more people, your characters become stronger within the game. While developing friendships around the various people in the town, you'll learn about their problems and life struggles. Things like sexual or gender identity, bullying, not being good enough at school, ulterior friendships, unrequited love, the truth, dealing with the loss of a loved one, social pressure, debt with money, and problems with family. And these are just some of the problems these social links will go through during your Persona adventures. Now we can't talk about Persona without talking about its awesome music. Now if you're a fan of Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, or Nier Automata music, Persona's music has to be among JRPG video game royalty. I'm sure as you're playing a Persona game, or long after you beat a Persona game, the music will continue to be stuck in your head. Helmed by Shoji Meguro, he's considered one of the best composers in JRPGs, and Meguro's musical talent is apparent as soon as you play a Persona game. Meguro is known to mix a variety of genres in each game, 
Personas 1 and 2 are dominated by dance and J-pop tracks. Persona 3 has hip-hop and pop tracks. Persona 4 is about the pop and rock tracks. And Persona 5 is all about that acid jazz. Now in JRPGs, you expect more of a fantasy, orchestrated, or folk-themed music. After all, JRPGs have been filled with these types of music for decades. But Muguro wanted to experiment in the Persona series, and it definitely paid off. Who would have thought that a hip-hop song would work as a battle theme in Persona 3 with mass destruction? Or that J-Rock would be a killer battle song in Persona Persona 4's Reach Out to the Truth, or that Acid Jazz would make an awesome battle song in Persona 5's Last Surprise. I know a couple friends who are new to the Persona series when first hearing about the game's music put the controller down and started bobbing their heads for the first 30 seconds or so. And to further show that Persona's music is popular, in Japan they often have Persona concerts. By incorporating a variety of modern music such as J-pop, J-rock, and hip-hop, Soji Maguro changed the way that JRPG music is looked at. Now let's talk about Persona's battle system, which keeps it old school. Rather than have active time battles like in the Final Fantasy series or battles in real time, the Persona series is still a turn-based battle system. And this is a big deal because most JRPGs have switched to an action-y, more active battle system, but the Persona games have stuck to their old school battle system. Do you want to go to the bathroom before inputting a command? Cool man, do you want to go AFK for a bit or grab a drink? The game will just chill and wait for you. And I feel with a lot of JRPG fans, they want to have that time to strategize their combat options rather than to be rushed with active time battle systems. So how do you fight these turn-based battles? Well, you use these things called personas, which is like Pokemon with their strengths and weaknesses. Adding on to this is the one more time battle system. And this battle system can be found in personas three to five. Basically what this is, is each character's persona has their own strengths and weaknesses. And if you hit the enemy's weakness, you can go one more time. If you hit all of the enemy's weaknesses on the same turn, you unleash a powerful attack called an all out attack. And trust me, you really want to get as many all out attacks as possible as the damage as well as the animation are awesome. What the One More Time battle system does for Persona is it makes the game more strategic, and it shows that not all RPGs have to have an active time battle system to make battles interesting and fun. Instead of mashing the X or triangle button, you're trying to hit the enemy's weaknesses while covering your own. And I feel that many fans think that's a very compelling gameplay aspect when it comes to JRPG battles. We can't talk about the Persona series without mentioning the user interface, particularly Personas 3 to 5. Now when it comes to JRPGs, the first thing that doesn't come to a player's mind is, wow, I'm going to play that RPG for the user interface. But Persona's user interface, especially Persona 5's, is the exception. Usually rummaging through a JRPG's menu system or interface can be quite a chore, but the menus in the Persona games are quite easy to navigate and are pleasing to look at. The menu's easy readability, vibrant colors, and distant themes are just some of the aspects why Persona has some of the best design in JRPGs. Let's move on to the themes of Personas 3 to 5. First, Persona 3. Persona 3's themes are isolation, time, death, learning to depend on others, and sacrifice. And the color that represents all of this is blue. And you can see this from the blue menu screen. By contrast, if you look at Persona 3 Portable, where you can play as the female protagonist, you can see that the menu screen is pink. And that's because the theme of this game through the female protagonist's eyes are more vibrant as well as more outgoing. Moving on to Persona 4, the atmosphere is more lively, more happy-go-lucky, more carefree, and facing your true self. And this is all represented by the color yellow. With the newest edition, Persona 5, the themes represent rebellion, fighting corruption, and being an outcast that no one accepts. And this is best represented by the color red. In addition, Persona 5 went one step further in adding onto that Phantom Thief theme. For instance, the font that you see on the menu screens look like it's from a kidnapping or one of those ransom messages. Furthermore, the art style of Persona 5 is amazing. Now, Persona 5 doesn't have the polygon count that a Final Fantasy 15 has, but at the same time, the graphics are still top notch. The game's interface ooze style and a sleek look. And that's because of the art style, which has this anime-ish look that blends so well with the themes, colors, and styles of the game. The art style of the game will ensure that this game's graphics will age well. This game really has this timeless feel as seen from the 2011 game Catherine, which was the testing grounds for Persona 5's eventual graphics and art style. And this is despite Persona 5 originally being a PlayStation 3 game and later a PlayStation 4 release. When you play a Persona game, it does a very good job of making you feel like you're actually in Japan. Now, if any of you guys ever visited Japan, 
The Persona series does a faithful job of recreating that entire experience of being in that country without spending money on an expensive plane ticket. And if you've never been to Japan before, the Persona series is basically like a 100 hour video game advertisement why you should visit the country. <sighs> I really miss Japan. In Personas 1 to 4, the game takes place in Mikagecho, Sumaru City, Tatsumi Port Island, and Yasuo Inaba, respectively. But it was Persona 5 that took the whole concept of being in Japan while playing a game. In fact, Persona 5 personifies Japan so much, it's often compared to, to the Yakuza series. Whether you're attending Japanese high school, strolling past the bathhouses, going to the arcades, going to the baseball batting cages, eating ramen, or just enjoying the nightlife of Shibuya and Shinjuku, Persona 5's image of Tokyo is strikingly similar. There are even similar or exact replicas between the game and real life. For instance, there's the Hachiko Dog in Shibuya, which is a famous statue that every Japanese person knows about. And the symbolism of the statue and why it's so revered today is one of loyalty and devotion to one's master. There are also familiar locations to people that have been to Japan before, such as Akihabara, Ueno, Ikebukuro, and Asakusa, just to name a few. Just seeing these locations will make you smile as you feel like you're in the virtual world of Tokyo. Now we have to talk about the Waifu Wars, and the Waifu Wars have popularized the Persona series to new heights. So what this is, is just basically picking out who's the best girl or girlfriend in a Persona game. The Waifu Wars first started in Persona 3, but really ramped up during Persona 4 when there were four main girls to date. Chia, Yukiko, Risa, and Naoto, and later Marie from Persona 4 Golden were the girls that the Waifu Wars was centered around. Fans definitely picked their favorites immediately, and it created this crazy battlefield of who's the best girl. Some people might think it's a bit silly to fight over who's the best waifu or girl in the video game, but that's just how passionate the fans are for their favorite ladies. The waifu wars would reach a new high when Persona 5 introduced a new slew of girls to date, including your own teacher, a nurse, and a journalist, who are all grown women. And at first, I had to admit, it felt kind of weird that Persona would actually go down this route and that you can date older women. And it might surprise you as well, because in the Persona game, you're a 16 or 17 year old student, or a second year student in Japan. But since Persona 5 is more of a dark game, where the protagonist is treated as a more independent adult, I think the option of dating older women isn't as weird. And if you wanna be a playa and date multiple ladies, the Persona games have you covered, as you'll definitely find out the outcome of being a playa during Christmas and Valentine's Day. Now speaking of the ladies, you'll definitely be seeing them, as well as the rest of your friends, on the school class trips. And the class trips are among the best events in the Persona game. Whether you're hitting on girls on the beach in Persona 3, going on a class camping trip in Persona 4, or flying to Hawaii in Persona 5, the class trips are a break from the fighting and grinding from the game's dungeons. These school trips are this immersive experience as you can get closer to the characters, and again, it really adds to the experience of being a Japanese high school student. The bonding events with your party members are also among the most memorable, hilarious, and enjoyable parts of the game. The voice acting and writing also must be mentioned. You'll hear some of the finest voice acting and writing in a JRPG. The writers at Atlas, the company that created the Persona series, really nailed the mood of the Japanese high school experience. And for any fan of JRPGs, the writing is what makes or breaks a game. Bad writing can totally take a player out of the immersion and make the player not only distance themselves with the characters or story, but with the game itself. But with good writing, as with the Persona series, it will make you a lot more immersed, closer to the character, and more invested in the story. For any JRPG, story to become among the best, solid writing is a must. With excellent voice acting, it adds on to the experience and makes each character more real and fleshed out. You'll see a lot of Persona's voice acting work hand in hand with its solid writing. So with a lot of things the Persona series brings to the table, a lot of people say that playing them rekindled their love in JRPGs. It's not every day where you'll play a JRPG that will totally blow you away or that will get you back into the genre. But with all the good aspects that we talked about Persona thus far, this series might be the jolt that the JRPG genre needs. And a lot of people growing up with JRPGs, such as the old school Final Fantasies, Super Mario RPG, Chrono Trigger, Skies of Arcadia, Wild Arms, and Breath of Fire, just to name a few examples. But a lot of the newer JRPGs, to these old school fans, didn't have the same addictive factors of the classic games. But with the Persona series, a lot of old school JRPG fans, as well as newcomers to the Persona series, came back into the JRPG fold. And with Persona 5 being hailed by many as one of the finest JRPGs to ever come out, it's easy to see why many former JRPGers came back to the genre. Which brings up the next point, the Persona series keeps improving. While some fans may argue if Persona 5 is the best game in the series, fans won't argue that with each Persona, 
production and quality of the games keep improving. As mentioned earlier, the Persona games keep evolving by adding new features and making the game's controls easier for the player. It's safe to say that players like seeing progress in the game series, such as the critically acclaimed Witcher series, with The Witcher 3. The Persona series is no exception. One example is in the original Persona 3, where the player cannot control the other party members at all. Yeah, this actually was a thing back then. So while the AI for the other characters wasn't too bad, it would sometimes do actions you didn't want the characters to do. Naturally, a lot of players complained to Atlas about this, and with the future Persona games, they made sure that you can now control your party members. Another thing the Persona series has been improving on is the exposure and the higher and higher review scores. The first two Persona games went under the radar and got mid-70 scores from the press, with higher user scores from the actual players. These two games' relative obscurity is most likely because the original games being released in the mid to late 90s were only in Japan. But later, these two games got Western releases in 2009 and 2011. The game really started to get traction with Persona 3 in 2006, as its FES and PSP versions received an 89 on Metacritic. Two years later in 2008, Persona 4 came out and became a huge hit. This is the point where the game started becoming more noticed to JRPG fans. When Persona 4 Golden came out in 2012, a lot of people were wondering, whoa, Persona 4 Golden got a 93? Is it that good? After this, the Persona series was now known to a lot more people, but pre-Persona 5 hype would get it compared to a JRPG giant. Between 2012 and 2016, when Persona 5 was released in Japan, JRPG giant Square Enix asked fans on their website if both titles were released at roughly the same time, which one would you prioritize buying? FF15? Persona 5, or both. From polls on various gaming sites and forums, more people said they would actually buy Persona 5 over Final Fantasy 15, showing the huge hype behind Persona 5. When Persona 5 did eventually come out in 2016 in Japan, and April 2017 in the US, a slew of JRPG fans, as well as newcomers that felt the hype from Persona 4 Golden and pre-Persona 5, bought the game. The game was a resounding success as it boasted a high score of a 93 on Metacritic, as shown earlier. Furthermore, Persona 5 would be on the receiving end of a slew of end of the year awards. The game won the best RPG award at the 2017 Game Awards, showing that the RPG was highly regarded by many. Gamers and gaming media outlets alike also showed their love for Persona 5, with many of the outlets ranking P5 in their top 10 games of the year. JRPGers were certain that Persona 5 and another incredible RPG, Nier Automata, were hands down the two best JRPGs in 2017, putting Atlas's game in good company. With Persona 5 now behind us, a slew of musical spin-offs in the work, and Persona 6 at least several years away, the Persona series is now one of the big giants in the JRPG realm. Persona has now arrived. So finally, if you're a newcomer to the Persona series, which Persona should you start with first? While a lot of fans have their favorite Persona game, I'm gonna say the newest one. Persona 5 is a great place to start. The reason I say this is that the gameplay and user interface are very polished. The game is very sleek and easy to control, and the overall game is incredible. And when you're done with Persona 5, the rest of the series is awesome as well. And while I haven't really talked about Personas 1 and 2 much, I would say Persona 2 is vastly underrated and one of my favorites. I mean, heck, you get to even fight Hitler in it. And who doesn't want that experience? Now over to you. So I hope you guys enjoyed our video on why the Persona series is so popular. Are you a Persona fan or are you a newcomer to the series? We'd love to hear your take on Persona and this video in the comments below. And if you guys want to watch more in-depth videos on video games, particularly Eastern Asian gaming, then please hit that subscribe button below. And until then, we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.